What's up guys? I'm sweating it out in the garage this evening. Uh, we've had a lot of days that are in the 90s right now. High humidity. Uh, this garage is not cooled. It's not even insulated, I don't think. Uh, it's got to be at least 90 in here right now, even though it's cooled down outside. Uh, but anyway, I got a tire to swap over. I'm still trying to find the Goldilocks combination of tires for this Marin Rift Zone 2 here. Uh, if you caught uh, my video a few videos back uh, about putting on the recons front and rear, I've got a 2.4 recon in the rear I really like that one the 2.6 recon that i have in the front i'm still not sold on it um i really just I've, I've had little issues trusting it in corners in the first place and then shortly after that i went on a trip to Sharando, uh and it was wet and it was rocky and the front end completely washed out on me busted my lip open got a couple stitches up there granted those conditions are not what the maxis recon is designed for anyway um, but since that happened it's really hard for me to trust pushing this thing into any type of corner unless it's hard pack you know I, I just feel like i'm always holding back in the corners because of it and it may grip beyond what i think that it will but i just can't get my brain to trust it um so I'm trying out a new front tire. It's something that I considered when I put this on in the first place. Anyway, I thought about putting this up front and that's the Maxxis Minion DHR2. Now this is a really designed as a rear tire to go with the DHF in the front, but the combination of the DHR2 in the front and the recon in the rear uh, is something that Jeff from Worldwide Cyclery, um, he raves about in his videos. Uh, he mentions it a lot in basically any tire video they do. He talks about how that's his preferred combination and the reason behind that is that you know you got the fast rolling recon in the rear that still offers enough grip the dhr2 in the front is lighter than the dhf uh still has the same side knobs and then just a little bit faster rolling center knobs but before i put this on i just want to get a quick weight of it uh you know i weighed these when i put them on so I know what those are. I know this is gonna add a little bit of weight to it, but I don't think it's gonna add too much. All right, so the 2.6 Recon that's on there currently was supposed to be 780, it clocked in, I believe at 814. DHR2 going on right now. This is coming in at 983.5. I don't know offhand what it was specced out at. Uh, I think it was pretty close to that, uh, but I'll put that number on screen right now just to compare. All right, so I'm definitely gonna add a little bit of weight back to this bike by putting this on. Uh, but I think it's going to be a worthy compromise for something that's got some bigger knobs. Going to give me a little more confidence in the corners. So let's go ahead and cue the time lapse while I swap it over. This is a pretty easy procedure, but for anybody not familiar, obviously you take the wheel off the bike, let the air out, then you got to work the bead free. I'm using a syringe to siphon out the sealant so I can reuse as much of that as possible. After that, I'm going to briefly clean out the tire. More importantly, I'm going to clean out the wheel. So one cool thing that I heard about making sure that you get the tire mounted up correctly, that it's rotating in the right direction. I actually heard this on BKXC's channel, although I'm sure he heard it somewhere else. Um, for Maxxis and most other manufacturers, you want to just make sure that the name of the tire and all the other decals and all that stuff is on the drive side of the bike, so opposite the brake rotor. And if you do that, then it should be rotating in the right direction. All right, so working the bead on the new tire, a lot of times I will just inflate these dry and then inject the sealant through the valve. In this case, I just went ahead and poured it in, spun it around to work the rest of the bead on. I like to pull the bead out on the shoulder, which seems to help with inflation. And as you can see, I'm just using a basic floor pump and the bead sat perfectly. So now you just get to shake it around, spin it around and make sure that sealant gets distributed everywhere. I wasn't kidding when I said I was gonna sweat it out this evening, but tires on, mounted up really easily just with a floor pump. So taking a closer look at this, you can tell right away that it's narrower than that 2.6 Recon. I mean, obviously it should be because it's a 2.4, but the knobs are noticeably larger as well, chunkier, taller. So it should give more grip. You can see the center row of knobs. You've got one that completely goes across, then one with a significant gap, and then like a tiny little gap, then back to the big gap, and then the solid one. So it's not like the DHF where all of those are kind of separated. So the center's always digging in. So all I have to do now is put this back on the bike and then I can get out of this sweat box garage. Uh, so I will do that and I'll go for a couple rides and let you know what I think about it. I'm just gonna roll some POV footage here at North Bank Trail in Richmond uh, while I give you some thoughts on this tire, but stay tuned because there's also some third person point of view shots in super slow-mo coming up a little bit later. Uh, so first thing I come across here is this uphill rock garden. This really has nothing to do with this front tire. It's really more of a testament of how well that recon in the rear can grip in situations like this. 
and pretty much any other situation. Coming up is a little bit of a downhill rock garden. Uh, this is where the front end comes a little more into play and it feels really good. Like it seems to hold a line really well. It doesn't feel like it's getting kicked off the side of rocks or anything like that. Uh, so it's definitely an improvement on more techy, chunky descents, that's for sure. Now back to the topic of climbing as I approach another little bit of a climb. Um, in other situations where it's hard pack, kind of flowy trails and you're going up a climb, uh, this doesn't seem like it's slowing me down at all. And in fact, the numbers back that up too. So there is one particular trail section uh, at Pocahontas State Park. It's an uphill hard pack climb and I set a PR on Strava on that with this exact setup. So it's really not slowing me down in the uphill sections at all. And when those hard pack flow trails start pointing downhill, this tire does a great job there as well. I think it's not even specifically designed to ride on hard pack, but you know, it has plenty of grip. It has great rolling resistance. Uh, so it's, it's really great overall. When it comes to cornering specifically, that's where I notice the biggest difference. And it's kind of funny because it's like what I notice is kind of not noticing in a way. So I don't hesitate so much in corners. I don't think about where I'm going to lose that grip. It just feels like it's going to grip at exactly the speed that I want to go. And that's exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for a tire that would give me the confidence that I needed that I wasn't getting with that recon up front. And as I said, you know, that recon may have gripped more than I thought it would in a lot of situations and I just couldn't trust it. Uh, this tire, however, I trust in just about every situation. So for me, this does really seem like the ultimate tire setup. It's the first time since I've owned this bike that I'm not thinking about what other tires I should try on it. I'm just really that happy with them. But of course, I will point out that your tire setup should match the type of trails you ride. So if you live somewhere with a lot of elevation gain, maybe you climb up a fire road, then you blast down this fun, chunky downhill section, you know, go ahead and put the DHR on the rear, put something like a DHF up front. You're going to have the most fun that way. If you're somewhere like me though, where you have kind of quick punchy downhills and uphills, not a lot of overall elevation gain, where maintaining your momentum is important, then I think this combination of tires is worth trying out. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it and or got something useful out of it. As I ride off into the midday sun, I will ask you to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment below, and I'll see you next time.